Quite a few people have been asking me for another limited budget food challenge. It's been difficult for me to do that recently, but I will return to it in future. However, I have something really interesting for you today, a limited budget food challenge from Nigeria. There are quite a few things I need to explain about this. If you want to skip all that explanation and go straight to the footage, jump to the timestamp you'll see on screen in just a moment. But if you do skip, you better not post some confused, concerned or angry comment on a point I'm about to now explain. So here's what happened. A guy named Babatunde contacted me in the comments on a video. He's a teacher in Nigeria, but he's currently laid off work without pay because of the lockdown. I had no clue what to do. It's not the first time someone's asked me for help, and I can't fix the world. But this time, an idea dawned on me. After a bit of to and fro conversation, we developed the idea for this video, a limited budget food challenge, 495 naira for food for one day for Babatunde and his wife, Omateo. Why 495 naira? Well, two reasons. Firstly, it's almost exactly equivalent to one pound sterling, so this is a pound a day challenge, which is a really nice tie into the series. Secondly, it happens to be the exact amount of money I sent via Western Union to a scammer in this video, after telling him I was sending £495. The scammer did not collect the 495 naira for reasons we can only speculate, but he was pretty angry about it. Now, about money. I'm not going to go into massive detail on this, but just to set anybody's mind at rest, I funded the shopping, obviously, and the bandwidth to send me the video content. I paid Babatundi for his time and work, and I will be sharing some of the revenue from this video with him. I'm not going to discuss actual numbers because money is a vulgar topic, so don't ask. I've worked really hard here to try to recognise and maturely deal with any issues of potential exploitation, and we discussed all of this at length before and during the project. For me, this has primarily been a fascinating cultural exchange, and I hope it will be for you too. This project also provided me with the opportunity to talk frankly with Babatunde about, well, let's not beat around the bush, Nigeria's most notorious export, advanced fee scams. We'll look at that in detail after we watch the challenge itself. There was also a trust issue to overcome here, but perhaps not the issue you might imagine. Babatunde contacted me on the back of my scam baiting series of videos, so in that sense he's seen evidence of me mercilessly playing tricks on people. Well, okay, scammers, from his own country. Of course, he's not a scammer, but it's still quite a leap of faith to trust that I wasn't just playing tricks again this time, on him. So here comes the challenge vlog. This is Babatunde's first appearance on YouTube, so please be kind. Uh, good day everyone, my name is uh, Oyebola Gane Babatunde and uh, I reside in uh, Owodi Egbado South in the state of uh, Nigeria and now uh, today uh, we shall be uh, preparing meals that is our uh, breakfast, lunch and uh, dinner using 495 naira for two people that is for me and my wife just 495 naira to prepare breakfast lunch and uh, dinner spending only 495 naira in nigeria for additional information this can only be done in a town in nigeria it can never it is not possible for this to be done in any city in nigeria be it Lagos State, Portugal, or any other state like that. Things are more expensive there. But here we are about living currently in all day here. It is more or less like a village. So things are relatively cheap compared to city. So we've actually we planned it and I will say that it's actually possible. But I want to see how it will actually be carried out. <laughs> Oh, 
Hello, Jeta. Hello, 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 <laughs> 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 I'm <laughs> Hello, <laughs> I'm going to Hey, I'm going to 
Tana. Okay, uh, good morning to you. Uh, <clears throat> I've been to the market. All right, uh, I bought uh, the maize, uh, fried fish, and I bought this gary. I don't know. It's a kind of food that we eat here in uh, in Nigeria. We call it gary. It is actually made from uh, cassava and you know, uh, uh, different kind of processes. Though uh, here we have pepper here. And this season, this one we call it Magi Kyo. I think it's the most popular season in Nigeria here. So the woman was kind enough to give it for us for free because I think it's actually sold for five naira, but she gave it for free. This water leaf is what we're going to use to make soup. We use it to make soup, then we'll use that soup to prepare meal for the lunch and also for the. Uh, for the uh, dinner for the dinner but we'll be eating this cooked maize for breakfast uh, again the yeah, but before cooking we have to break it into to so that it will be easier Okay, the big ones will have to be broken into two, so as will be easily submerged into the water in the cooking pot. No problem. Mm. She can do lots of work to pull. Oh, I'm located in a town here, you know, the state of Nigeria, and the town is called uh, Odeiwa. Here in the town, things are really cheap compared to those living in the city. Because this is a town, so things are not that very expensive, well, like those who are living in the city, like Lagos, like um, Songota, like what I call So things are actually more expensive there. But here, because uh, we are closer to the farmers who actually bring this thing to the market, so they are really, really cheap. In Lagos, you can't get this for more than 15 in Lagos now. This this would be like uh, probably four and fifty nine or cheaper is three and fifty nine Lagos. So because we are living in a town, we also you can also call it a village, depending on how you say it. So things are really, really cheap. Okay, so set down ready. Come on, you see. Yes, I think the first should be ready in the next so uh, 30 minutes or so. I'm not really sure. I'm testing if it is soft enough. I 
Okay, this one's they are still hard, so they are not done. Once they are done, all of them will become soft. Yeah, I think it should be done. And red. Ooh. They break fast. He said. No, still hot. Mm. Ah, it tastes good. So good. This is for my wife. This is for my wife. And this is for me. Oh. Okay, I think my baby is enjoying part of the meal too. Yes, I think uh, the breakfast is taken care of. Looking forward to lunch and uh, dinner. Okay, uh, <clears throat> this is the preparation for the lunch. And now, uh, you're also using part of the soup for the dinner. So, this is the preparation of the water leaf so she's preparing the water leaf i don't know we have uh, this surplus here in uh, west africa i don't know if we have it in other part of the world so she's preparing the water leaf she has to remove some part of the stalk and also the of uh, the seed more than still have seed so she has to remove the seed i think uh, This is my way of doing the preparation because I, I can't do this myself. I don't even know how to do it. I've never done it before. But I think she's very good at it, as you can see. She has to do this to every stalk of the water leaf. The next stage of the preparation is the slicing of the uh, water leaf. She has split them and arranged them. So she's slicing them into bits. This is the last part of the uh, water leaf to be sliced. Then we have some part of part of it that are not good again. Like this one, this one will just be discarded. Okay, there's a new one that will be cooked. This is called roller pepper. We bought it for 15 naira. Then the onion for 20 naira. Then we try to buy out uh, the uh, zinc cube. I think one was uh, 5 naira. And the woman was kind enough to give it. She gave us for free. You know, she, it's like a, she knew wanted to use her project. So that was very kind of her. So she's trying to prepare the pepper now so that the pepper can be mixed with the vegetable to make the soup. So this kind of soup is called water leaf soup. So this is the part where the 
Pepper is greater. You have to uh, rinse the vegetable because uh, some of them have uh, dead you know, sand particles in them that it has to be removed uh, so that your soup will not become uh, will not be full of sand. So you have to remove that. So that's the main purpose of the rinse and also some uh, bacteria. This is to save out the water to drain, to drain, to drain the water. So the journey starts now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is locust beans, and we have this at home. So we'll be adding this to it. This is part of what we have at home. So the locust beans is going to be rinsed. Those are some uh, particles uh, that actually that is inside the locust bin, so it must be detected and separated from it. That's the main purpose of rinsing to detect some particles and take them out. So this is the fish and the fish is going to be rinsed with uh, salty water. Yeah, you can see salt has been added to the fish and water will be added too. So it's going to be rinsed with, uh, with the salty water. You allow the uh, the pot to heat up a little bit so that they can dry up all the uh, water droplet that is inside the pot. So we don't buy this red oil. We have this at home. So this will be using as uh, one of the ingredients of the cooking. So we have the red oil at home. So this will be using. So the red oil is uh, heating up, as you can see.
Okay, so this is in keep. So the locals gun has been added. So now the uh, water lips going to be added to the soup. So the honor is added and everything is stirred together and covered and allowed to stay on the gas for like five minutes. So this is called water leaf soup. So the soup is done. Done, done, done. So the next thing is now to make a bar. Now we use the gari to make a bar. So this is the water for the uh, for the bar. So we eat part of the uh, soup for the for lunch and also the remaining part for the dinner. We'll be eating this uh, soup with a uh, bar. We'll also be making the bar with a uh, curry. So in the night, for dinner, we're going to be using fufu and the soup. The water is boiled now. This is the making of the bar. There it is. So, after spraying now uh, the dairy, we have to keep stirring the whole mixture to make a pot. So after standing for like three minutes, the ebba will be completely ready for consumption. This is lunch. This is the finger bowl. Oh. Mm. This is so good. 
so so good ah they are still very much hot hot So for dinner, we will just be warming the soup and uh, we will eat it with a uh, fufu. So we are taking fufu and a vegetable soup for dinner. I think it's warmed up enough, so to serve it to plate now. So we have four wraps of fufu sold for hundred naira. So my wife will be eating two wraps, so I'll be eating uh, also two wraps. Uh, so there's no power supply, so everywhere is uh, it's dark. So we just have the torch light and uh, a torch light for for the lights. This is Nigeria, and the power is not stable. Ah, tastes so good. Tastes so good. Now to the summary of the whole challenge. I went to the market, I bought the ingredients, so when I come home for breakfast, we ate cooked maize, which I actually enjoyed. And so my wife also enjoyed it. In fact, maize, cooked maize or roasted maize is one of our favorite meals. She actually one of our favorite food. She actually she loves eating maize, so she actually enjoyed it. And for lunch, we cooked the water leaf soup and we ate the water leaf soup with our uh, with a uh, eba that we prepare using the gari and now uh, for dinner I bought a fufu so we use the fufu to add the remaining part of the water leaf soup and by the way the water leaf soup was very very yummy and now uh, tasty we actually uh, we actually enjoyed it now the most difficult part of the challenge was actually our local market here. The market is all, yeah, the market here is called uh, Ojawuri, that is Ode Market, named after the town. So it wasn't actually very arranged. So the navigation of the market was the most difficult part of the challenge for me. And now, uh, you know, <laughs> there's nothing I can do about that. Only the government can do something about that. So that was how we were able to use 495 Naira to eat three times in a day. Again, for my location, I'm residing currently in Odi Egbado South in Ogun State, Nigeria. Thank you for watching. And please, please subscribe if you are yet to do that. And if you have subscribed, please don't forget to turn on the notification bell. Thank you. Now I've never travelled to Africa, so for me there was so much going on here that I had to keep stopping and winding back to look at various details. There's a lot to process and think about here. This whole thing's been hugely interesting for me and I have enjoyed and cherished every part of it. It's been a genuine pleasure communicating with Baba Tende and he really took the challenge to task in true atomic shrimp spirit. 
So as I mentioned earlier, I had the chance to ask Babatunde some questions about the whole advance fee scam thing, which is, internationally, probably the most infamous thing about Nigeria. Here's what he had to say. I asked, before the pandemic, how easy or difficult was it for a person to find honest paid work of some kind? I've heard people saying that 419 scammers turned to scamming because they literally had no other choices. Is that true in your opinion? Babatunde said, Well, finding an honest job in Nigeria is hard but not impossible, especially a well-paying job even for a degree holder. But, because of bad governance and other factors, morality is eroding from our society, so honesty is not cherished anymore, unlike in the 1960s to 1980s when, if you were very rich and the source of your wealth is not clear to the people, the people wouldn't give you any respect even with your wealth. Back then, society cared to know the source of your wealth before you were accepted and recognised into the society. However, things have changed. The motto of our society is now, just get the wealth, it doesn't matter where it comes from. So back then, people were wary of what they do for money. It's not like that anymore. So instead of honest work and getting some changes to live by, they prefer to go into a legal business and make huge amounts of money, knowing that when the wealth is accumulated, every other thing will fall into place, irrespective of the sources of wealth. So in a nutshell, job opportunities, either well-paying or not, are scarce in Nigeria, but not totally absent, as some scammers made the whites to believe when they are caught. The morality of our society has decayed to such an extent that an average parent doesn't care about how their child makes money, they just want them to get the money. Consequently, since online scamming is less risky, not strenuous and paying a lot, tens of thousands of Nigerian youths are going into it. So the issue of Nigerian scammers turning to scamming because they literally have no job at all is not true, but it's also demeaning to the honest working Nigerian youths. I asked, what does the general public think of 419 scammers? He said... Well, the truth is that most people don't see online scamming as a wrong thing, simply because the victim is not local. So, because society doesn't fight them, they're not ashamed to identify themselves as a Yahoo boy, 419 scammers. In fact, there are many Nigerian hip-hop artists that glorify them in their music. So, because of moral decadence in Nigeria, generally speaking, online scamming is not discouraged, especially in cities where living without money is not considered as living at all. I said, so how are the police and security agencies reacting to this? Babatunde answered, Do you know that if you go into a Nigerian police station to report somebody, probably they attacked you, you'll be asked to pay a certain amount of money. In Uwode here, it's a thousand naira, before an officer will be assigned to follow you. And you will also be the one to pay for the transportation for the given officer. So the Nigerian police officer will arrest the scammers just for the bribe that they want to collect from them. So they don't care if the boys stop scamming or not. In fact, there was a video on the internet where a Nigerian police officer was videoed telling a young boy to start online scamming. The EFCC don't fare better than the police. They're just political tools. Okay, but is the banking sector helping with the curbing of all of this crime? Just like I said, the moral decay is too deep. So the banking sector fare no better. Many bankers are helping these scammers in perpetuating this societal evil, like helping them to withdraw, setting up an account for them, etc. So how is it affecting the honest Nigerian youth looking for a legitimate job? Nigeria's image is soiled abroad, so this causes lots of difficulties for the honest ones. Foreigners don't trust Nigerians again. Whenever we enter any online forum or chat room, the moment you're discovered to be a Nigerian, you're either thrown out or the users leave the room. It's very disheartening and I always wish I could do something about it. And this is why I'm so happy that you're giving me the opportunity to do this. So how has the pandemic changed all of this? Well, I think the pandemic affects them a lot. I have like three of them as acquaintances and they're all complaining that they can't get any dime from their clients, by which they mean victims. So as the pandemic started, was there an increase in crime? Yes, of course. In fact, there was something like a 300% increase in crime to the extent that the police refused to lock up some thieves that were caught by some residents. The police claimed they had no more space in their cells to keep them. It was also during this pandemic that my apartment was burgled and my laptop was stolen. It got so much worse that residents started keeping vigil in order to secure themselves. So what's happening in the daily life of citizens in Nigeria right now? The truth is that things are very hard for an average Nigerian currently. The increase in the price of goods and services is not helping the matter. So many have lost their jobs since the beginning of the pandemic and no help whatsoever from the government. So many have resorted to either begging or stealing. Are there any hopeful signs that things are returning to normal now? Yes, there is hope. In fact, the crime rate has reduced in many areas drastically, so there are hopeful signs. Now for my last question, I prefaced it quite a bit to stress and emphasise that I really wanted a frank and open answer, even if it turned out to be something I wouldn't like to hear. I asked, Finally, what do you think of me? A white man with a comfortable life far away in the United Kingdom when I waste the time of 419 scammers. Is it bad that I do this? He said, 
I really don't know how to say this without sounding incompletely honest. I genuinely and lovingly enjoy watching scammers being tormented and messed with. In fact, that was exactly what led me to your YouTube channel in the first place. The YouTube algorithm recommended one of your scam baiting videos to me. Many times I used to wish I had the resources to be doing the online vigilance that you are doing. In fact, I see guys like you as heaven sent for the white due to the awareness and education you're creating for your countrymen. I truly dream of what you're doing and I admire you a lot. You can't imagine how hurtful it is hearing an elderly man crying over a telephone conversation between him and an Indian scammer. The man was crying while telling the scammer that he'd lost his entire life savings. The scammer showed no remorse at all. So that shows how callous and inhumane they are. I was moved to tears. I watched the video on Jim Browning's channel. Sometimes I wish I could support you guys financially. So please keep up your good work. May the heavens be with you. So there we go. I hope you will join me in thanking Babatunde for standing up to and prevailing in this limited budget food challenge in the midst of what was clearly a very difficult situation even before the pandemic. And I'm thinking about what he and I might do together next. Perhaps a mini documentary about daily life in his community or maybe something else. If you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you.